Trump rolls in life hearing the Access Hollywood team. Are you worried about Stormy Daniels testifying against you? Where's my life? Notably, Donald Trump didn't want to answer any of the questions he was actually being asked by the press after opening statements concluded and the first witness began his testimony in the Manhattan District Attorney criminal trial. You heard the reporters ask Donald Trump, where's Melania? What was your reaction to hearing the Access Hollywood tape being talked about? Donald Trump didn't want to answer those questions, so he walked away. But what he did want to do is attack witnesses like Michael Cohen, attack other judges like Justice Ngoron, attack the Attorney General. He's not even in the Attorney General case. Granted, there was a, another hearing over the bond at the same time. You're in a criminal case now, Donald. But Donald Trump then attacks Michael Cohen, who is a witness in violation of the gag order that's been imposed on Donald Trump in this case. And here he says, Michael Cohen's been caught lying. He's a liar. Something needs to happen to him. Here, play this clip. Now, when are they going to look at Pomerantz or what Pomerantz did? Because that's bad stuff. And when are they going to look at all the lies that Cohen uh, did in the last trial? He got caught lying in the last trial. So he got caught lying, pure lying. And when are they going to look at that? Now we'll go to... I think what Donald Trump is talking about is Cohen's testimony in the New York Attorney General civil fraud case where Justice Ngoron actually made a finding that Michael, Co Michael Cohen told the truth at that trial. But by the way, when you look at the gag order, you'll see that uh, Donald Trump is strictly prohibited from attacking witnesses who are testifying in this matter. Here, Donald Trump continues to attack Michael Cohen and also spread lies and disinformation following the opening statements. Um, and here, Donald Trump says that Michael Cohen went to jail for things having nothing to do with me. What do you think he went to jail for? He went to jail for doing things for your benefit and at your direction. Here, play this clip. In terms of his representation, but he represented a lot of people, but he puts in an invoice or whatever, a bill, and they pay and they call it a legal expense. I got indicted for that. What else would you call it? Actually, nobody's been able to say what you're supposed to call it. If a lawyer puts in a bill or an invoice and you pay the bill and in the book, it's a little line that's a very small little line. I don't know if you could even write more than two words. It's not like you can tell a life story. They marked it down to a legal expense. This is what I got indicted over. Think of it. I got indicted. I'm the leading candidate. I'm beating Biden. I'm beating the Republicans now. I have the nomination. And this is what they try and take me off the trail for. That checks being paid to a lawyer. He is a lawyer, or was a lawyer. And also the things he got in trouble for were things that had nothing to do with me. He got in trouble, he went to jail. This had nothing to do with me. This had to do with the taxi cab company that he owned, which is just something he owned, and medallions and borrowing money. You know, what? as I think about uh, what Donald Trump just said, we should think about who the first witness was who was called by the district attorney's office. It's David Pecker, who was the uh, chair of AMI, which owns the National Enquirer. And Donald Trump entered into a concerted a conspiracy with David Pecker leading up to the 2016 election to catch bad stories about Donald Trump and kill those bad stories by buying the bad stories off from people like Karen McDougal, who Donald Trump was having sex with while Melania was pregnant and thereafter. And ultimately, when AMI realized they were probably committing a crime and they stopped, Donald Trump then had to do the scheme through Michael Cohen to pay off Stormy Daniels, who Trump had sex with. At the same time, he was cheating on Melania. He was cheating on Karen McDougal, who he was cheating on Melania with. He was then also cheating on them, all, them both with Stormy, and so he had to pay um, uh, Stormy off. But one of the things that Donald Trump said in this press conference, which is rather incriminating in my opinion, is Donald Trump says that, this, you'll see in this press conference, Trump's like, this is just about bookkeeping. I didn't even deduct the legal expenses. 
that's what shows that it's incriminating that you were trying to hide this. It's the whole point of this case. Keep on talking. Here, play this clip of Trump saying that. It was just at the last minute they decided to do it. It's a case that, uh, if you're looking back, it goes back many, many years, 2015, maybe before that. And it's a case as to bookkeeping, which is a very minor thing in terms of the law, in terms of all the violent crime that's going on outside as we, as we speak, right outside as we speak. But this is a case where you pay a lawyer, he's a lawyer, and they call it a legal expense. That's the exact term they used, legal expense in the books. And another thing that wasn't even said was we never even deducted it as a tax deduction. So that takes a whole of us here. Most people want to deduct everything. We never even took it as a tax deduction. But they call the payment to a lawyer a legal expense in the books. They didn't call it construction. They didn't say you're building a building. It called a payment to a lawyer. Because as you know, Cone uh, is a lawyer. Represented a lot of people over the years. I'm not the only one. And wasn't very good in a lot of ways in terms of his representation. But he represented a lot of people. And then Donald Trump, as part of this press conference, says, you really, you get indicted for this? This is a crime to falsify business records? Uh, this is this is criminal? This is bookkeeping here. Play this clip. Very unfair. The judge is conflicted, as you know. It's very unfair what's going on. And I should be allowed to campaign. And whoever heard of this, you get indicted for that? People in the court just said to me, I can't believe it. This is the case. So we Did you know that traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat? It could lead to acne, allergies, and stuffy noses, and it's just gross. Miracle Made offers a whole line of self-cleaning antibacterial bedding, such as sheets, pillowcases, and comforters that prevent up to 99.7% of bacteria growth and require up to three times less laundry. Using silver-infused fabrics inspired by NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. So, you get better sleep every night. These sheets are infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. No more gross odors. Miracle Made sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than sheets used by some five star hotels. So stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. Go to trymiracle.com slash Midas to try Miracle Made sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code MIDAS at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash MIDAS and use the code MIDAS, that's M-E-I-D-A-S, to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash Midas to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. Yeah, it's it's a crime to falsify business records. It, it is. It's one of the reasons why AMI and David Pecker entered into a non-prosecution agreement as well because of the crimes that they were committing on your behalf as well. That's why Cohen also went to jail, even though he and as you keep on attacking Michael Cohen, who's a witness in this case, I should remind everybody there's a gag order hearing on Tuesday, tomorrow. So uh, this will certainly be addressed. Here, by the way, is uh, Donald Trump attacking Justice in Goron, of all people, because there was a bond hearing that took place. Play this clip. So I just want you to know that that's taking place in front of an extremely crazed judge who's the most overturned judge in New York State. He was overturned four or five times on that case alone. That's, uh, you know who it is. I don't have to mention names. I want to be nice. I want to be very nice. But uh, a thing like that, a thing like what's going on right here should never be happening. It's a very, very sad day in America. I can tell you that. Thank you very much. 
And here's what Donald Trump says. He goes, my friend, Don Hankey, Knight Specialty Insurance Company, that gave this surety, what this is all about is that the New York Attorney General is trying to embarrass a good surety. She just wants to embarrass a great surety company. Play this clip. They're moving out of New York because of it. But Judge Ingorn had absolutely no idea what had happened. He didn't realize we put up 175. But when he found out we put it up, he said, what happens if it goes up or down? I said, it doesn't. Or they said, it doesn't go up or down. It's cash that we put up, all cash. Very few people could do that. And the deal was approved with the Attorney General. You can believe that. But the deal was approved. She just tried to embarrass everybody, and she tried to embarrass a very good bonding company by saying they weren't creditworthy. Well, they were creditworthy, and what was more important is they had a security, $175 million that I put up. But the I mean, why wouldn't you just go to a normal surety company? And by the way, during the bond hearing, a deal was worked out where Donald Trump had to pledge actual cash as collateral behind the surety bond rather than a mix of cash and cash equivalents uh, in the amount of 175 million dollars so um, that issue was resolved but donald trump still continues to attack new york attorney general letitia james after the criminal trial which is being prosecuted not by the ag but by the manhattan district attorney and here donald trump says that uh New York Attorney General Letitia James is the worst AG in history. Play this clip. So on the Letitia James case, she's the worst attorney general in the country, by the way. On Letitia, and she keeps a lot of business out of New York and businesses that are here are leaving. And that means jobs and a lot of revenue. Somebody's gonna step in, the governor or somebody has to step in and do something because your business is a fling. But on Letitia James, the money was put up, it's 175 million. And I don't think she's complaining about me for the first time ever. She's complaining about the company. But why would she be doing that when I put up the money? So I just want you to know that that's taking. And in addition, Donald Trump posted witch hunt. And then throughout the day, he kept on posting about presidential immunity over and over again. Here, I made a little video. You can see uh, this is from Donald Trump's social media. You'll see all of the posts that he's made. It's like post, 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 post. Witch hunt, absolute presidential immunity, all in caps. And he just keeps on posting it over and over again. Folks, the trial is heating up. Again, we have David Pecker on the stand. Opening statements are concluded. The prosecution talked about this wide-ranging conspiracy to catch and kill these stories and the falsification of business records to interfere with the 2016 election. Donald Trump's lawyers, on the other hand, claim that the payments to Michael Cohen were just valid legal expenses. Um, and then they went on to say that Stormy, Stormy Daniels was basically shaking down Donald Trump and it was her fault, not Donald Trump's fault. And that all the salacious things you're going to hear don't matter because all Donald Trump did was sign checks and there's nothing wrong with signing checks and it's everybody else's fault other than Donald Trump. There was a lot of objections that were made, more objections than I had ever seen in any opening statement I've ever participated in for sure that I've ever even watched because Trump's lawyers kept on uh, seemingly violating motion and limites, these pretrial motions, and the objections were consistently being sustained. Donald Trump was also being described by uh, people in the courtroom as that he was struggling to stay awake. Um, his eyes were closed for a short period of times. He was jolted awake when Todd Blanche's lawyer nudged him while sliding a note in front of him. And then uh, he was also described as um, uh, Trump is, this is from Olivia Newsy. Trump is tilting his head dramatically and making trout-like movements with his mouth as he listens to Judge Mershon. And um, you can see some of these uh, potential images of what that might look like uh, over here. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million subscribers together. Have a